now that the move to Dallas is complete, I actually have to head back to New York for a little bit. One, because I haven't seen my parents in about three months, so I gotta go and check in on them. Also, I got a lot of stuff I realized that I need to bring back to New York. And they're pretty fragile, so I figure I just drive. Also, it's crawfish season, so on the way, I'm gonna pass through New Orleans, get some Cajun Creole food, then maybe spend a couple days in Atlanta, a place I really never explored before. But yeah, on the road again. Well, they look like, like almost peaks and valleys. You see that? Almost hills in the distance. Hope we don't have another Dorothy situation on our hands. First stop, Lafayette, Louisiana. And I do want to say, these are some very Louisiana looking trees. Just place my water dates, homie's gonna be a little bit. So while we're waiting for the food, just a huge shout out to Raycon earbuds for sponsoring this video. I showed you guys in one of my previous videos, my previous pair of earbuds were more than two times the price of this. The case was bulky and I would drop them all the time because it didn't have the little magnetic thing that attaches it to the case. And these ones, look at this, never falls out. Also, my ears are shaped really weirdly. So a lot of times earbuds would just kind of fall out when I'm moving around. But these, I wear these every day when I'm working out, when I'm running, fits perfectly. And I like the compact case. I love the color blue. You see me wearing blue shirts all the time. I think it's a complimentary color. So once I tried these out, they've been the only pair I've been using ever since. If you don't know, Raycon was co-founded by Ray J and they set out to provide innovative earbud designs that didn't break the bank and that's these right here. And these are the Everyday Yee 25s. They connect seamlessly. They give you six hours of playtime. Also other celebrities like Snoop Dogg, Brandy, Mike Tyson, my colleagues if you will. Oh, oops. So I just dropped some names there. They also love these. So if you're looking for a new pair of earbuds, you want to give these a try, go to the link down below. We're just going to buyraycon.com slash Mikey Chan and you'll get 15% off your order. Raycon earbuds start at about half the price of other premium wireless earbud brands and they sound just as amazing as other top audio brands. And if you don't like blue, you can get these in other fun colors, patterns, different fits. I've actually gotten messages from you guys saying these are truly awesome. So I'm glad you're liking them. As always, if it's not something I absolutely love, not make it into the show. All right, I'm gonna go check in on my order. I'm so excited to be back around Louisiana. People always said if I want really good Cajun food, I gotta come to Lafayette. And if you don't know, there is a difference between Cajun food and Creole food. And the most basic difference is that Creole food is, is more fancy, is more city, and Cajun food is more country, is home cooking. There's no tomato base that goes with it. I got a crawfish etouffee. This is one of the most popular dishes in Cajun and Creole cooking. And they give me on the side some jalapeno grits. And then I got oh, some, some garlic bread. That's always nice and this when you're in Louisiana you gotta eat some gator so fried gator and some ice cream to go with my uh, bread pudding I tried this the last time I was in New Orleans this dish is basically crawfish tails it's cooked in gravy with rice sitting on top of it That is so good. Little tender pieces of crawfish amidst all that great Cajun seasoning and I think this actually would go really well with the uh, fried gator which pretty much tastes like chicken. If you wouldn't tell me that's gator, I would tell you it's chicken nuggets. Oh yeah, jalapeno grits is something you must get if you're around here. I love how the flavor intensifies as you chew. I'm trying to speed through these dishes because I got this ice cream that's gonna be melting soon that I need to put over my bread pudding. Otherwise, I would never forgive myself. I love how tender the crawfish is also. I will highly recommend the fry gator. That and the crawfish, I don't know which one's more tender. I mean, gators give off a pretty tough image, but in reality, at least in this case, soft and tender. Mm, gotta get to my bread pudding before this ice cream melts. First of all, this is a giant piece of bread pudding. They definitely do not skimp on portions in the South. Hello, look at that scoop of ice cream. This is definitely the biggest piece of bread pudding I've ever had in my life. and it's one of the best. Again, bread pudding is not something I eat all the time, but Lord, this is good. You taste the sweet cinnamon. Just dancing in perfect harmony with that vanilla ice cream. And for me, bread pudding is all about the texture. It can't be too soft for me. I want it to have some chew. And this thing 100% delivers. The crust is nice because the texture is a little different. And when I opened this, you know, I saw how big it was. I'm like, yo, if this doesn't taste good, this is gonna be really hard to go down, but 
just the most perfect texture with crust on the top and the bottom, just giving off a slightly different bit of texture. And that vanilla ice cream just elevates something that's already so incredibly scrumptiously good to even new levels of yum. I can't believe I'm almost done with this. I've been sitting here pretty much enjoying every bite of this. Then you look down, it's almost gone. Time flies when you're having fun. Uh, uh, Seatbelt feels a little tight already, which might not be a great thing because uh, down the street from here, I don't know if it still exists, but the last Popeye's buffet all you can eat Popeye's buffet used to be there before, you know, the whole COVID situation forced it to shut down. So uh, I tried calling them. I couldn't get anyone on the phone. So I'm actually going to drive down the street. I can see it right now to that Popeye's and see if the last Popeye's buffet is still alive and well. There it is. Mike Chen reporting live from Lafayette, Louisiana. The last Popeye's buffet is still not yet open. They said it's not completely done, it's not completely shut down. So hopefully one day this thing will open back up. Thank you. So this is the chicken, right? Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. There's too much I want right now. All right, so this is the place I hear you gotta stop at when you're in Lafayette. So right behind me is Billy's Boudin. If you don't know what a Boudin is, it's basically a stuffed sausage. So I got a Billy's Boudin. I don't know what's in here. It looks like something green. Maybe it's the Holy Trinity, I hope. And then I got the crawfish Boudin. Let me just, uh, hang on. I just want to be sanitary about this. Look at this. Beautifully stuffed sausage. You can see the little bits of crayfish in here. This is so freaking good. It tastes like a jambalaya stuffed inside a pork casing. It tastes all that great Cajun spices in here. And this thing is burning my tongue right now. Inside delicious sauce covered rice. And again, you can see the bits of crawfish all wrapped in such a snappy casing. Put that on your must try list. Wow, my mouth is on fire, I love it. It's not just like burning, it's just so happy because there's so much seasoning and spices in there. And this is the Billy Boudin. I don't know what's in here. Hmm. Seriously, you pass by Lafayette, you don't get one of these? It's like you've never been here. I love this so much. I think it has some liver in here, strands of meat. I definitely taste some celery, so maybe the Holy Trinity is in here. One of the best things I've had in Louisiana. Oh. So this is the crackling. You can see how red it is on the outside. They do not mess around when it comes to spices here in Louisiana. Oh. So I wasn't gonna get this. The lady behind the counter, she, she basically was like, just try one, try one, try one. I try one, had to order a bag right away. Well, check this out. This is a bolding ball. I think this is chicken, but it's a baseball sized piece of, what well, looks like crackling, but I'm sure there's stuff inside it. Oh my God. Inside there's rice, there's celery, there are pieces of ground meat, all stuffed inside this crispy, delicious fried outer shell. How could I have not known something like this existed? You can see here, a nice blend of fatty and lean meats with the holy trinity it makes this whole thing angelic. Last thing I got, this is a pepper jack cheese egg roll. Beyond its ultra crispy outer shell, stuffed with cheese and meat, it's cheesy, fatty, crunchy, and every single bite I'm taking of any one of these food items. Just makes me wanna kick myself for not having this last time I was here. This is a cannot miss food item if you're in this part of the country. If you're going to New Orleans, take the two and a half hour drive over here, it's worth it. Mm. Had to go get another 
two bags of crackling. And what's different about crackling than just fried pork rinds or something is that crackling also has a bit of the fat, bit of the meat with it, which means much more flavor. Oh my God, you gotta get the chicken ones. Covered in chilies. You got a lot of that fat in here too. I got a half pound bag. I don't think it's enough. Good morning. Ah, this is the only place open right now. I thought a lot more food places would actually be open this early. Ah, this city is definitely more of a nice city. I always look forward to starting my day off with some of this hot stuff. Yeah, you're a hot stuff. Hmm. For some reason, way doughier than I remembered. Ah, a little hard to swallow. Still not bad. Today's my main food day in New Orleans, leaving early tomorrow morning. I got my day planned out, you know, as soon as the restaurant's actually open. We're gonna start off with some crawfish because it's crawfish season. Super excited about that. That's in about four hours. Then definitely some grilled oysters. I'm going to a po' boy place I heard is amazing. And 100% going back for butter shrimp. That's one of my favorite things to eat here. But I'm thinking right now, I'll just eat this and maybe go back and sleep some more because nothing was really open until around 11. I've been looking forward to a big plate of crawfish as soon as I got it. There's a number of people around New Orleans who invited me to a real backyard authentic crawfish boil. And I really, really want to go, but given the current situation, probably still not good to be around a group of people. So uh, here I am at uh, Cider Seafood. Haven't been here before, but heard good things. This is my appetizer. It's called a volcano. And this thing is pretty crazy. It's an upside down taco shell covered in here, crab meat, cheese, sesame seeds, some kind of dressing. And then on the bottom, you have these beautiful slices of seared tuna. I'm thinking just break this down and kind of make a little combination platter out of this. Wow, oh my gosh, there's crab meat in here as well? Inside the volcano. That must have been a sacrifice, you know, be before it erupted. Oh, there's shrimp as well. This is like the most elaborate seafood salad. That's pretty good salad. I mean, it's mainly just crab and tuna and shrimp. So a big emphasis on the seafood part of the seafood salad, which I got no problems with. Tuna's good, shrimp is nice and plump. You're definitely getting a lot of seafood with the salad. My crawfish is ready. Of course, you get your crawfish boiled by the pound. So right now it's $4.99 a pound. And to eat this, pretty simple. Twist the tail, comes right off. Suck the head. Oh, that's delicious. Twist the tail, the nasty stuff comes out. They can pretty much just suck the meat out. That's so good. Anytime I'm here, I never have a bad crawfish session. I was actually gonna eat a uh, crawfish in Lafayette, just didn't have enough time. But these, oh my goodness. Oh, this is a good one, look at it. I always contend, flavor-wise, the head is the best part. It's really where all the flavors reside. You see that right in there, that, that yellow stuff? That's the miso. Oh yeah, that's good. This place right here, the crawfish is spicy after about 10 of them. I'm starting to feel my tongue burn. And it comes with a great burst of citrus flavor because they added all these orange peels when they're boiling the crawfish. And I didn't really used to like eating crawfish. I think the first time I really enjoyed it was my last time here in New Orleans because folks here are serious about their spices and they're serious about the heat. I don't even think you get to choose like a non-spicy version of this. It's always just gonna be spicy. The other thing I love about this is that I'm eating like a five pound plate right now. Don't be intimidated by this. Because these crawfish, you know, it's not that much meat, but after eating a big plate like this, you do feel a sense of accomplishment. Great scent from the garlic. Look at this, look at this. It's basically chili oil, like natural chili oil formed from the crawfish. Also, you get a sense that this is really not a touristy place. Everyone that's sitting down right now, it looks like they're just going on a lunch break. 
Mm. I said this last time I was here, and I'll double down on it. Cajun country, Louisiana, best, most unique, most flavorful, native, local food you'll find in the country. This is the kind of stuff you won't get anywhere else. I mean, you can go to a crawfish boil in New York and whatever. Your crawfish is frozen. It costs like $12 a pound. This stuff goes from a fishing boat to the restaurant every single day, and then it's on your table. Four ninety-nine dollars a pound. Oh, this is so cool. They just sent me out. This is the totem pole. Look at this. Soft shell crab in between a couple fried eggplant pieces. I'm not exactly sure how to even begin to eat this. Giant crab cake sitting on top of a soft shell crab. I take a little break from my crawfish and eat a totem pole. 100% come and get this. This is bomb. As the kids will say nowadays. Mmm, super crunchy soft shell crab. This is your first crunch. The second subtle crunch is from the eggplant. And just put this all together. This is ridiculously good. I'm so glad they brought this over because this is not something I ordered. And I would have missed out on telling you guys how good this is. So you might have missed out. But no, none of us will miss out. Oh, this is so good. There's a layer of cheesy, creamy sauce on the bottom too. Oh my gosh, I'm like totally negating my crawfish right now. Whole ginormous self-shell crab. Look at all that great tamale. So, this is what my plate of crawfish looks like now. And see, I do feel a sense of accomplishment. Oh, thanks, thanks. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. I feel like I did something useful today. My hands are a little raw, tongue's on fire, but that's a good feeling. Feeling good? Yeah, feeling good. That's all that matters. It's just surreal to eat that much crawfish and get your check, which is only 20 something dollars. Oh, by the way, if you're gonna do this next time, get something like a poncho. I got crawfish guts all over me. Although, that smell pretty good. But after a huge seafood breakfast and five pounds of crawfish, I know what everyone's thinking. There's really only one thing to do after all that. Go get a po' boy. Okay, can I get one six inch shrimp and one six inch roast beef? This way I get best of both worlds. I've been hearing good things about this place for so long. Whoa, 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 whoa. This is a six inch? Either this place is awesome or Subway's been lying to me my whole life. This is two six inch subs? What? These are extremely big and heavy and hefty and it's just making me so happy right now. So I got the two most popular po' boys. The first is the fried shrimp. I feel like I'm rolling out like a red carpet right now. La da da! There it is. Fully loaded fried shrimp po' boy. Definitely not a six inch. It's way bigger than that. Oh my gosh, look at this loaded with fried shrimp, tomatoes, lettuce, mayonnaise, pickles as well. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Please do yourselves a favor when you're in New Orleans, come and try this. Words won't do this justice. I will try. First of all, this thing is loaded with fried shrimp. You're not just tasting the batter. Look how big and plump and juicy the shrimp is. Mm. The shrimp itself is so juicy, it's seasoned perfectly. Crunchy outer shell, just accented by the sweet tomato, the sour, crunchy pickles, and this bread. Oh my God, this bread. Please come and try this. One bite, I can feel my heart start to race and that's not just because I'm eating fried food. There's real emotions here. I've had a lot of roast beef sandwiches in my life. I'm sure you've had a lot of roast beef sandwiches in your life. Have you seen roast beef this freaking juicy before? Okay, so the bread is just loaded. I mean, they needed a forklift to lift all this meat onto this bread. This is gonna be a messy one. Hang on a second, sorry, I need a... I bit into it, I chewed it, I took multiple bites. I still can't believe how tender that beef is. This is the most fall apart, melt in your mouth, tender cuts of beef, maybe to ever make an appearance inside a roast beef sandwich. It 
It's a bite you never want to end. Gravy soaked into this delicious, chewy loaf of bread. I had a piece in my mouth and just because of gravity, the rest of it just fell into the wrapper. But this is one of my favorite cities to visit. Not just because of the food, because of the haunted houses too, you know, like everywhere. Take a little break with some affogato. It's a cool little place. It got like six different flavors of avocado. One of the most popular desserts in New Orleans or Nola. Every time I say Nola to someone, people always ask me, what's Nola? Oh, Banana Foster is one of the most popular desserts in New Orleans and this is in an affogato. That's delicious. So I started loving affogato when I was hosting this uh, ice cream show for Complex. And I did this episode with um, Jada. That was like dream come true. And she told me Italians would eat this like every single day in the afternoon as a pick me up. So I started doing that. I'm not a big coffee person, but coffee with ice cream, that I like. So these, hopefully, are the bennies I've been looking for. I just wanna say, first of all, these are flaky, and the middle is emptied out, and they shoved pralines in there. Powdered sugar, of course, is on top. I predict, get ready for some crunch. <laughs> wow, mind-blowingly good. It's so flaky on the outside. It tastes like a little crispy croissant on the outside. Inside, it's just warm and flaky and sweet with this deliciously buttery, like a praline cream. Do yourselves a favor, come here and get these things. It just tastes like a warm, loving hug. So incredibly light. And again, that subtle crunch, listen, 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 listen. That just tastes like a gentle lullaby. Mm. Three easily down, and I wish I had some more. Cannot leave New Orleans without some grilled oysters and barbecue shrimp. This is the most outrageous plate of grilled oysters I've ever seen. There is something just fundamentally unholy or extremely heavenly about this. Garlic, parsley, cheese bubbling on these fresh oysters. And look at this, crazy looking garlic bread. And this is my barbecue shrimp. You guys do this differently than most other people. Usually you get barbecue shrimp, it's, you got a side of baguette. This thing is just, they dug a hole in the baguette and they put the shrimp in. Good. God. Oh my God. It's like making out with the flames when you take a bite of this. I can't believe it, I've never been to this place before. Little lemon juice as well. Juicy plump oysters grilled to absolute freaking perfection. It's cheesy, it's garlicky. Mm. I found a pearl. There it is. Can I, can I pay off this meal with this? That's $100,000. Oh yeah, at least $100,000. I'm done with this whole YouTube thing. This, <laughs> retiring off this. Dip the baguette yeah, into that right great bacon. butter. Mmm. Right Heck to the yes. Wow. These are delicious grilled oysters. Just be careful when you bite because you get a pearl yourself. They can retire like me. Barbecue shrimp, again, never had it like this before. Sauce, everything inside this bread bolt. Oh, I feel good. Oh man, I don't even know what I'd like more, the shrimp with the sauce. This thing is so rich and buttery, but at the same time, it's not overly anything. So you just like continue to want more of it. Mmm, that sauce is amazing. This is a great place. I feel like this time in New Orleans, been to like a lot of new places I've never been before. And each one of them just shines so much. Just outstanding places I went to this time. Great food and a million dollar pearl. Not a bad day in New Orleans. I'm gonna pass this down to my kid. All right, get ready for the Mike Chen Ghost Tour of New Orleans, abbreviated edition, because I'm not walking up much. So the first place I'm going to is called the Andrew Jackson 
hotel, which is down the street over yonder. I've actually been uh, thinking whether I should have done this ghost tour because my check for the oyster place came out to be exactly $48.48. Now, if you're Chinese, uh, you know why that's bad. In Chinese, it's 4848 or 4848 or die die. So yeah, that was my check and now I'm going on a ghost tour. <sighs> I don't make the best decisions in life. That is the infamous Hotel of Andrew Jackson. You know what though? Like there is a bunch of hotels on this road, one looking more haunted than the next. I'm sure all these ghosts love every one of these places. Like seriously, look, look at this. 905 Royal Hotel. Even the sign looks haunted, but this is it. The Andrew Jackson Hotel. So originally it was built in the 18th century and that was when like yellow fever was sweeping through New Orleans and a lot of people were dying. So they needed a boarding school for all the kids who were left without parents. Of course, yellow fever means something completely different nowadays. Anyway, so this place was originally a boarding school and apparently a fire swept through New Orleans in the 1890s and this place burned down and some of the kids died in the fire and the ghosts of those kids are said to haunt the hotel to this day especially in room 208 like one guy woke up his TV was on he swore he turned it off before he went to bed and when he got up and looked over at the TV a boy was sitting there watching the television. I don't know how a boy from like, you know, the 1800s know how to operate a remote. I, I'm not, I don't know, but that's what happened. When he screamed, of course, the boy disappeared. There's also sounds of giggling. Um, I think somebody got pushed out of their bed. And besides the ghost of the boys, there's also a ghost of an innkeeper. There's the ghost of apparently Andrew Jackson as well. So, but even just looking at this, you know something going on in there. So I've been standing out here for like, 10 minutes or so I've been waiting for uh, maybe someone to come out of the hotel so I could perhaps get a personal interview of if they felt any chills or experiences in there but no one has come out at least no one that I could see so I'm gonna head out to the next location the next place we're going to oh right here I was walking underneath it without even realizing this is the infamous LaLaurie mansion this is not only one of the most haunted buildings in New Orleans, it's one of the most haunted buildings in the country. So the story goes, there was this woman called Delphine LaLaurie, and she was basically tormenting and killing her servants in the house, torturing them to death. Until eventually people found out because one of, one of the uh, people she was torturing escaped and jumped off the balcony, tr attracting attention, and the police went in. But she somehow escaped and was never seen again. And to this day, people who lived in there, they hear footsteps, they hear screams, moans. Nicholas Cage owned it once, so that it just kind of added to the curse. But yeah, there it is. It does kind of exudes creepiness. All right, anyway, that concludes the Mike Chen Ghost Tour of New Orleans, the only edition. <laughs> See, in this video, I was able to put food and scary story in at the same time. Anyway, the wind's picking up, the clouds gathering. It should be raining soon. So I'm gonna go back to my hotel, hit the gym, and uh, leaving for Atlanta tomorrow morning. Hope you all enjoyed this food tour of Cajun country as much as I loved eating it. And as always, I'll play as a win too. Listen down below for you. Thank you all so much for watching. Until we eat again, see you later.